Hello everyone. Um, this is the third lecture and final uh, video lecture of um, uh, week 14. Uh, we're covering Constantinople. Um, and in this um, video lecture, I'd like to turn to the urban landscape and the architectural projects um, uh, within Constantinople um, as it became uh, the imperial center of the of the Byzantine emperors. Um, and I would like to talk a little bit also towards the end, um, uh, the large scale rituals of the empire that took place um, on the streets of the of the empire and how the city really became a kind of a, um, a landscape of imperial, um, a landscape for imperial propaganda um, as well. Um, as I mentioned in the previous two lectures, um, we're really focusing on this kind of really narrow time period from uh, 4th to 6th century or so um, at the time when Constantinople was built with, by these kind of several building projects, uh, starting with Constantine uh, and particularly uh, peaking with um, the work of Justinian um, as well. Um, uh, we again, um, and, and this is really, I, I want to start this lecture with this really marvelous um, mosaic um, that's from um, actually the um, uh, late 10th, early 11th century um, mosaic from the reign of Basil II. Um, uh, more than actually 400 years after the construction of Hagia Sophia, this mosaic was installed in the um, in the south southwestern entrance of the um, of the of the basilica, um, this was actually after the um, iconoclastic period ended. Um, so this means that this kind of mosaic would be allowed. Um, what we're seeing here is a really fascinating scene um, of uh, with Mary and Jesus um, seated on a backless. Um, a throne um, um, and um, um, and on their um, left on their right on the, on their left uh, we see Constantine himself um, a, who is offering a model uh, a building model of the uh, of the city of Const uh, of city of Constantine Constantinople to uh, Mary and Jesus. Um, on their right, um, we see um, uh, Justinian, who is depicted, um, who uh, is offering a model of Hagia Sophia um, to uh, Mary and Jesus. Um, and, and so as this um, kind of really summarizes the, um, the kind of um, uh, how the construction of the city of Constantinople and the construction of Hagia Sophia at the time of Justinian um, were really um, uh, significant for the history of the city. Um, and remember, these are sort of really major ancestors and how Constantine and Justinian were really already very important uh, sort of ancestral figures for someone like Basil II. And this is the iconography for the history of the city that is being depicted um, here. We talked about the different names of the city. Uh, I hope that's, uh, that's kind of really clarified, but I wanted to sort of bring back this map um, to show you, to discuss the Imperial Peninsula, which is um, which really comes out into this Bosphorus Strait in a very protected position. You can see that once you actually build city walls all around that Imperial Peninsula, um, then you have a very, very protected uh, space. All you have to do um, that is more vulnerable is to, to actually build a, uh, a series of walls on the, um, um, on the western side, on the, on the land um, side of the city. And that's exactly what Constantine did, uh, built a, seri uh, a, a line of defenses um, um, uh, protecting the city from the from the from the land um, vulnerability from the land, uh, and you have Golden Horn as a kind of a nice um, estuary 
to uh, to protect your ships. Um, but Byzantines also built a number of harbors on the um, on the southern side of the Imperial Peninsula, and, and we're going to look at them uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty quickly. Um, the on the north, um, the um, uh, north of uh, Golden Horn. Uh, was um, uh, was the hill of Galata, where the Galata Tower was built by the Genoese. Um, we will see, and that that area has uh, developed actually more in the old, during the Ottoman Empire, um, in more recent um, actually um, centuries um, as well. So here's a here's a map of the historic uh, peninsula. If we look at this. Um, uh, 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 peninsula a lot more closely. Um, you can see the tip of the peninsula is actually where the Byzantine emperors decided to put uh, their most important monuments, namely uh, their palace, uh, the Great Palace, um, as well as um, uh, their most important churches like Hagia Sophia, Hagia uh, Irini, uh, and, and, and so on. Um, and then um, uh, and then you can actually see uh, two series of walls on the west. Um, first, you see a line for uh, Constantine's wall. Um, and after a while, that, uh, that wall became insufficient. Uh, and at the time of uh, Theodosius uh, in the 5th century, a second set of walls have been built um, by the Emperor Theodosius. Um, expanding the city westwards um, and um, building a fortification system this time with actually a moat and a, and a kind of a double um, sort of system with very strong uh, multiple military gates um, also the incorporation of a kind of a, a new summer palace that you see on the top um, uh, left on the north uh, called Blachernai um, that was uh, that was an alternative summer palace that was built at the time of Theodosius um, and for it, as part of that kind of um, um, uh, 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 defensive system that was uh, uh, that was built around um, around that time. Um, this huge uh, 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 defensive system uh, was about uh, four and a half miles long. Uh, built with brick and stone, and it's really formidable, um, and um, really not. Uh, it it really gave a lot of trouble to the Ottoman um, uh, Ottoman emperors who wanted to take um, take Constantinople um, at that time. If you look at a little close up map here, that shows how big uh, that shows the ceremonial streets. So. Um, you see the Hippodrome on the right um, with the Basilica Cistern and Hagia Sophia. So, and, and that's where the Great Palace um, also is, a kind of a really cluster of important public and imperial buildings. And from there starts a number of um, ceremonial streets, these, these colonnaded streets um, that we know from Roman architecture. And we talked about a similar kind of core colonnaded street in Jerusalem that was actually built by Hadrian and the emperors who followed him. Um, we have similar um, uh, a major sort of streets that acted as the urban backbone of, um, of Constantinople uh, crossing the uh, peninsula in two different directions uh, uh, particularly. Um, and um, these these streets, these colonnaded streets, were punctuated with um, uh, forum, various forums. Uh, Constantine's Forum, Forum of the Ox, Forum of Arc Arcadius, and sort of there are these kind of public plazas that punctuated the various, um, um, that marked um, uh, the various uh, portions of, of these um, colonnaded um, ceremonial streets. Um, here. Um, um, and you can see in the southern part of the peninsula, um, you see um, the, uh, the variety of harbors that were built um, uh, at uh, different points within the development of the city. Um, on the left, you see the uh, harbor of Theodosius, um, which was recently discovered in the, uh, in the last couple of decades, um, when uh, the Turkish government was actually building a um, 
building an, uh, a subway um, at this point to cross the Bosphorus Straits. Um, this is something that was planned for a long time. And uh, finally, um, sort of when it was being built, they decided to build a, um, uh, a um, subway station right there, which actually ended up um, sort of really uncovering the uh, Theodosian uh, Harbor. Um, here is a ritual reconstruction of that area. You can see um, in the middle uh, the massive um, a hippodrome where um, a lot of sports games, races, uh, particularly horse races, were held. It was one of the most important public spaces um, that, uh, that functioned within, um, within, the, um, within the city. Um, and on just uh, on the left uh, below, you see the Theodosian Harbor and the other harbors that served the palace um, as well, the smaller harbor that served the palace, um, uh, which I will talk a little bit about. Um, and on the left, um, on the um, uh, you see uh, we see the circular planned um, a form of Constantine with Constantine's column in the uh, in the middle and on the right um, is the entire complex of uh, the great palace um, and its uh, gardens um, at the tip um, that almost uh, really resembles re reminds me of uh, uh, Assyrian cities that we talked about which had their palace gardens on the on the citadel um, as well as I mentioned um, uh, in the um, uh, at the site of Yenikapu, where the Theodosian Harbor actually existed, um, there was a subway station construction that took place in recent years, um, uh, recently actually completed. Um, and once that site was opened, of course, uh, archaeologists were called in, and several years of excavations uncovered um, both the harbor. Uh, the harbor structures themselves, but also a number of shipwrecks within the harbor, um, which is really quite interesting because um, in the harbor, um, when a ship was um, no longer um, useful, it was very old, those ships were, um, were consciously uh, sunk um, by their owners, um, and so most of them were sunk in the harbor itself. Um, so archaeologists discovered several, more, the, more than 40 uh, shipwrecks um, belonging to different time periods in the, within the Byzantine Empire um, and in the medieval period. And so um, this beca became a very, uh, an important excavation with a wealth of, um, a wealth of uh, materials also, particularly in Byzantine, late Roman Byzantine, uh, shipfaring and uh, medieval shipfaring uh, technologies, uh, shipbuilding technologies um, as well, and the development of seafaring trade at this time. Um, another really fascinating development here is that under the Theodosian Har Harbor, archaeologists were uh, discovered a Neolithic, a Neolithic village, um, which is um, now the earliest um, settlement that we know um, in, in the, uh, on the grounds of the city of Istanbul. Um, these are, here's a view of the restored city walls of, the, uh, of, um, of uh, Theodosius the second from 5th century um, uh, AD. You see the uh, multiple levels of wall construction, multiple and with a moat. Um, in front of it, it was uh, it was really very formidable um, uh, fortress, and this uh, schematic plan actually shows you a lot better uh, in a way, in a less cluttered way, um, those um, uh, ceremonial streets that actually led one to the north and one to the west, um, and they were uh, sort of really punctuated by these uh, different. Um, forums or fora um, that were built by different uh, Byzantine emperors. Um, here's a view of uh, from the, the, the little, it's a reconstruction of, the, of this uh, little harbor in front of the great palace um, and it's, you can see its uh, formal gardens on the, um, on the right. Um, and this is the, um, uh, I spoke about Blacherni, um, the, um, 
the uh, uh, the summer palace um, that was built uh, with Theodosius and after um, that was built on the northern part of the uh, of the city. Um, this is actually uh, one of the sort of few remains that we have, architectural remains that we have actually from Byzantine emperors. The Great Palace, um, we don't have such uh, impressive architectural uh, remains from uh, the, uh, the Great Palace uh, itself. Um, here is a reconstruction of the form of Constantine, <clears throat> which was uh, designed as a, with a portico, with a circular portico, uh, in a circular plan uh, with a rotunda, um, and a um, and a column um, and a, a column shaped monument um, in the middle. This column uh, is known as the Column of Constantine. It was a monumental column uh, that was raised um, uh, with uh, uh, by uh, 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 Constantine the Great and designed by his um, his architects. Um, and it uh, is uh, supposed to have a. Um, uh, a nude statue of Constantine at the very top, which was later uh, uh, replaced with a um, golden cross, which was uh, which was meant to have um, actually part of a true cross um, as well. Um, um, so um, uh, uh, this this was a, this was a, a, a monument that kind of, that was actually. Um, uh, that is still partially standing without uh, uh, without its uh, monuments on top. It's a really interesting hybrid sort of pagan uh, Christian monument um, uh, coming really from the Roman traditions of raising columns as commemorative monuments in public spaces. Um, uh, and this is how it looks today on the left uh, and on the right how it uh, w would have looked in the um, within the um, uh, within the um, uh, Forum of Constantine with its uh, two-storied uh, portico surrounding it. Um, and this is a, a kind of a plan of a um, uh, the, that ceremonial center of the city um, with the Hippodrome that we, uh, we spoke about, the Great Palace, the general layout of the Great Palace. Um, as well as the uh, the site of the major churches, uh, the um, Aia Sophia and Aia Irini, uh, that were built around um, right next to the imperial palace, um, with the Augusteon. Um, Augusteon in the middle that you see um, here is a reconstruction of the Augusteon right next to the Hagia Sophia. It's almost like worked like a courtyard for Hagia Sophia. So it's a major public space. Uh, that was dedicated in honor of Constantine's mother, Augusta Helena, um, at the heart of Constantine's, uh, Constantinople's urban, um, urban space. Um, it was earlier, um, this was uh, actually in Byzantium before Constantine, there was a marketplace at this location. This marketplace um, then was transformed by Constantine himself to become a public place of public assembly, a really truly civic space um, where the emperor could actually show up and speak to uh, show himself to the uh, to the uh, to his subjects as uh, as well, um, and um, and of course uh, the combination of uh, all of these sort of architectural projects um, in building such a complex urban infrastructure and urban landscape uh, was actually the construction of Hagia Sophia, uh, the, the major sort of uh, most famous um, uh, Orthodox uh, Basilica um, from the ancient world, um, built uh, between 532 and 537 um, uh, of the common era uh, and um, uh, with by the architects Antemius of Tralles and Isidorus uh, of Miletus and this is a major really major um, architectural um, architectural um, uh, innovation of course that combined um, in its plan and its structure that combined the basilical structure and uh, and a this uh, centralized structure of building martyria um, as well um, and so um, this is a building that was built in the sixth century and it's still standing today um, until recently it served as a museum 
um, uh, but now recently it has been opened to um, uh, uh, Muslim worship um, as well. And I'm showing you a, um, a, 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 a um, an illustration by Gaspare Fossati and Louis Hug uh, from 1852 showing um, uh, the uh, the sort of interior space um, of Hagia Sophia um, and its suspended dome. The dome, of course, is was the major innovation of this um, of this structure, um, which was um, uh, built on the um, on these two supporting half domes um, on either side of the structure, um, and uh, it is um, it. When you are in uh, uh, in Hagia Sophia, uh, the dome uh, seems to be sort of hanging from heaven, uh, just because of the the, the windows that are um, being uh, that are um, uh, placed all around at the base of the of the dome itself. It has this incredible impact, and this dome has collapsed over time. Um, and, and rebuilt um, uh, uh, in the Byzantine period, um, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, it's really a spectacular architectural accomplishment, um, and its um, interior space um, really looks like that. Um, today, I'm hoping that we will discuss this. Um, most important thing in, uh, for, uh, for us to think about is a Hagia Sophia really provided an important space for uh, uh, imperial ceremonies um, and liturgies, um, and it really became a major um, uh, space in which um, these kind of imperial spectacles were, were held. Um, and one um, really interesting uh, textual account of all these ceremonies that we have um, from, um, from, uh, from the Byzantine Empire um, is this book, the Ceremonious Aula Byzantine, um, uh, or the uh, trans can be translated as the Book of Ceremonies, um, which was written in, uh, uh, it's a ceremonial sacred protocol that were written in Greek in the 10th century at the time of Constantine the Seventh, um, And it really is fascinating because it's um, in its first uh, 37 chapters, it survives in two, uh, two manuscripts. Um, it describes uh, processions, ceremonies, and religious festivals in Constantinople, great feasts um, uh, like the elevation of the cross, um, Epiphany, Palm Sunday, Good Friday, um, Eastern Ascension. A variety of saints' days were uh, uh, celebrated, and these are, are really um, described by this text, as well as other kinds of ceremonies. Um, one of the fascinating things um, about Constantinople at this time is that all of these ceremonies, both sacred and secular, were um, were really um, organized, and um, there was um, there's a uh, uh, there's a constant recording and uh, documentation of these ceremonies by the state um, as well. Um, and when we read uh, this, this, this text, we see that these are, actually some of these are um, descriptions of actual ceremonies that happened, um, although they, um, uh, they, I think in the antiquity, they were used, um, uh, they, they were used as, uh, as prescriptive. They sound a little uh, prescriptive. This happens and that happens and the emperor goes here um, and, and so on. But, um, uh, but there are, um, several of them are actual ceremonies that are described. And this, it actually gives us a tremendous amount of information about um, urban ceremonies and festivals that were celebrated in, um, in Constantinople. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. And this is, I want to really suggest one really fascinating um, sort of um, uh, topic for your papers would be to really consider this book of ceremonies, which is available in translation, and really to think about the use of um, architectural space in um, in Constantinople. Um, and I'm showing you a, um, a reconstruction. And some of these ceremonies took place within Hagia Sophia. I'm showing you a cutaway perspective of um, of the um, of the space of Hagia Sophia itself and. Um, uh, and the plan 
uh, plan here and you can see the sort of central dome and how the half domes um, and the aisles were organized in the form of a basilica or a supporting um, to this kind of really amazing cascading structure of the of the Hagia Sophia. Um, and again, the, um, the mosaic um, that was actually added to, um, uh, to the entrance of the, um, of the building uh, on the tympanum on the southwestern entrance uh, much later in the, um, at the time of Basil, um, Basil II. So I will uh, wrap up my, uh, my lecture um, uh, today. Um, with um, with this image of Hagia Sophia, and we will discuss uh, Hagia Sophia um, in uh, in our class and some of the specific ceremonies um, that were celebrated um, within the building, but also in the public space of um, Constantinople. I hope you had a good um, uh, you have a good understanding of the general urban layout of Constantinople with this um, with this lecture. Um, and um, we will open all of this to discussion on Wednesday. Thank you.